first objective will be to break through the main gate. Stormbringer defeated, we've broken the curse and can unleash our power as the Demolisher breaches the gate, allowing our army to storm the fort. Curiosity is the most powerful thing you own. Imagination is a force that can actually manifest the reality. 
I came out of that movie and I thought that it's unbelievable how much you want to go there. And it's interesting how they have created that feeling that Pandora is actually a place and a beautiful place where you think you would like to be. The game should deliver on that promise. It should be the ultimate experience where you actually go to Pandora and where you can live an alternative life on the moon. We are working side by side with Lightstorm to create a game based on the world of Avatar. With the power of Massive's uh, Snowdrop game engine and the team's passion and <laughs> obsessive focus on detail, uh, we know they're the right group to bring the beauty and danger of Pandora to life. It's a mesmerizing world that you want to visit and see with your own eyes. To now be able to recreate that in a computer game is a fantastic, humbling experience. The excitement is uh, enormous and it's, uh, it fits very well with many of the things we are interested in. Ecology, sustainability, fighting for what you believe in, a lot of interesting values that really resonate well with the team. Our ambition is always to make the best games in the world. Uh, in this case, I think we have a unique opportunity to do something that is very, very rare. Every player gets to choose how they want to experience this incredible universe. We're about to embark on an amazing adventure. The insane attention to detail is one of the key things that made Pandora feel so real. When we're done, everybody will get to experience the beautiful world of Pandora. trapped on this bridge. Maybe there's an escape route. Okay, I think we're safe. As you move around the caves and tunnels that these creatures inhabit, you'll see what humans have done to your kind over the years. Sneak to safety. 
No, one of the things about being a young creature is that you're, you can crawl into spaces that no human could follow. Now this huge cave with a mysterious tree is one of the last few places of refuge in the world for creatures like you. So that's the world through the eyes of a young creature, running away from even the weakest human. Now we're going to go forward in time and see the world through the eyes of a larger, more powerful adolescent creature and see what they're capable of doing.
He was right. It all looks completely untouched. Ben, something's not right. I'm seeing a massive radiation spike down there. She's waking up. In Echo, you must survive the strange workings of the palace. It studies everything you do. Everything you are. To use it against you. What is this? That's you, Em. The Echoes are exact copies in every way. They behave like you. And only do the things you do. So it's the way you play the game that shapes your enemy. Every interaction, every movement, has consequence. But it's only once your behavior diverges enough from the current echoes, and the palace reboots, that the echoes will be updated. So when the light returns, you'll be facing its newest version of you. Reborn with all the choices you made in the last cycle. They learn from me. They do what I do. The palace watches everything you do in the light. But in the darkness, as it reboots, it is blind, and you are free to act without consequence. The only way the Echoes never change is that they'll always want to kill you. But you decide which tools they have at their disposal. If you cease to do something, so will they after the next blackout. Always stay a step ahead of the Echoes, and keep a cool head if you want to survive the palace. Like a message in a bottle on the rolling tide, Sea of Thieves sweeps onto the shores of 2017 full of mystery and promise. All the new features of update 0.1.1 mean that players picked for our next playtest face the dangers of an expanded world and a skeletal uprising as they venture far across the open sea. Back in December, we let 1,000 lucky insiders roam free in our first update, and since then, that pool of players has only grown. As we've pushed back the boundaries of our world, you and your fellow rascals will now find many more places to plunder. How many more? Nobody knows. Well, we do. But there's no point in spoiling it, is there? Within this indeterminately larger world, players will discover new islands presenting new challenges and opportunities. One might come with a hidden cove to anchor in safety while you shovel up loot. Another might let you perform a daring getaway after grabbing another crew's gold. Just look before you leap, as fall damage is now definitely a thing. More islands also mean more outposts, increasing your options for hustling chests safely back to the shipwright. This should make it easier to avoid the ganking that some of you feared during our first update, which is how the cool kids refer to treasure-related blunderbuss incidents. While you're off adventuring, make sure you don't let your guard down, not with the rattling remains of long-forgotten pirates prowling the islands. They may be gutless in strictly biological terms, but these old skellywags will still come right at you with rusty guns blazing, so your crew members need to watch each other's backs. So that's our latest update. There's still so much more to come, but for now, we hope you can join us to search and skirmish your merry way through the new, wider world of Sea of Thieves. Cheers! Identity is an MMORPG that's unlike any other you've ever played. It's not based on levels or skill progression. It's based on you, your character, and what you want to do with it. Identity is all about giving absolute freedom in a world that's full of other people and fun things to do. 
we've gotten rid of most of the AI and replaced it with people. It's people who are driving down the street and it's people who run for governor. It's people who play as police officers and fight crime. You'll find sports, car racing, paintball matches, and more others than I have time to list. If living off the land is your sort of thing, you make a pretty good living hunting or fishing. Identity is all about the freedom to do what you want to do, when you want to do it. While Identity is an MMORPG in most ways, we're going to be offering you the option to rent your own servers too. So if you want a different, more specialized style of gameplay than our official servers have, such as maybe hardcore role-playing or some kind of like endless action, server operators are going to have control over hundreds of features to customize what they want. If you're somebody that likes to take the quiet route, you can form a business and play the market, or you could take the other way. You could become a criminal, you could rob people, you could rob banks, you could steal cars. Everything is open for player interaction. The land identity is enormous with all sorts of landscapes from cities, farms, and wilderness. There really is so much more I wish I could show you with this, but we've only just gotten started here. Without limits. A world where you can build anything from spaceships to orbital stations. Explore. Craft. 
trade, and conquer, all in one universe, shared by everyone at the same time. Forge your collective story. This is your world. Rebuild civilization together. Dual Universe. director on last year. Last year is an asymmetrical multiplayer horror game where one killer has to hunt down a group of teenagers. I'm playing as the slasher, one of three playable killers that ships with the game. The game is set on Halloween night in 1996. We've been meticulously crafting a universe that draws you in and puts you in the center of your own 90s horror film. Survivors can actually fight back with weapons. So being the killer means you need to be smart and creative with how you attack your victims. One of the best ways to do this is with predator mode. This lets the killer unspawn and turn invisible at any time. The killer can then move extremely fast, completely invisible to the other players, and use this to plan the perfect ambush or toy with the survivors. To spawn in or out, the killer has to be out of sight or use the environment as a spawn point. There's a couple of survivors now. It looks like Chad and Troy. They might actually have weapons already, so it could be risky to try and attack two people head on. What I'll do is unspawn and look before I plan my attack. First, I'll place a trap here. Last year is filled with different environmental spots, like this trap door that the killer can use to separate survivors from one another. Now I'm going to actually use that skylight up there as my spawn point. Now that I've trapped him, I'm gonna go in for the kill. We hope you enjoyed this preview of last year. We look forward to sharing more gameplay features with you in the future.